Okay, so I'm back with Joey again. Um, we're here for round two of going over some logic stuff. You guys have been asking for this, and uh, you know we've been busy, but here it is. So uh, yeah, how you doing, Joey? Yeah, going good, thanks, mate. Good, good. So I think we were already talking about this a bit, um, but what seems like the best way to proceed is we'll just kind of go over stuff from last time, make sure it's, you know, fresh enough, do a little recap, and then uh, after that, we'll do one or two new things. And I think the new things will be um, probably doing a bit of translation, English to logic, logic to English, at least one of those. Um, we'll do some filling out tables, and uh, we'll do generating tables if we get that far. So is that okay for you? Yeah. Okay, cool. No worries. So I guess, first of all, just going over the terminology. And I mean, I know you've only done this stuff like once, so if any of it's forgotten, don't worry about it. But uh, do we remember like what a proposition is? It's just a, a proposition is just a statement, isn't it? Yeah, statement a, a, with, with a feature, though. Um, having truth value? Right, yeah, statement with a truth value, correct. Um, do you remember what an argument is? Um, premises and a conclusion. Right, absolutely. Um, and do we remember what validity is? Uh, so premises that will necessarily lead to a conclusion? Yep, absolutely. Oh, I better mute this so that doesn't pop off. Um, and then... Uh, just so everyone knows, like, I'm actually reading notes that I've pulled up. <laughs> <laughs> like... Okay, well, that's fine. It's all good. <laughs> Um, and then soundness. Remember what soundness is? I don't remember, but I've got it written down here. No, I do. I, I remember you had a you had this debate once about um, with someone that got really heated about like it has to be um, a combination of validity and true premises. Uh, so they have to both yep. um, be true. Wait, wait. They That's both it. have no, to you be. Got it. Okay. Yeah, just validity plus true premises. Because if the conclusion follows necessarily from the premises, that's validity. And the premises are true, then the conclusion's going to be true. So Yeah, so your premises can be... So so what it is, is like, you can have, like, one false premise that can lead to a true conclusion. Like, it can be logically consistent, but it's not necessarily sound, because one of the premises will be false, and then that would... Um, is, that, is that right? I'm, I'm not sure I followed that. Are we saying that you could have a true conclusion, uh, that, uh, but you have premises where one is true and one is false? So the argument yeah, is but... invalid, but the conclusion is true? Okay, so the argument... Wait, wait, wait. You can have a valid argument... Wait, you can have a valid argument that isn't sound, yeah? Yes, yeah. You can't, you can't have, have a sound... A sound... Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what I meant by that is like one of your premises can be false, but it can actually be logically consistent and lead to a true conclusion. Consistent is a weird word to use there and lead to uh, is a weird word there. Okay. Those both sound like they might have to do with validity. But yeah, you could have premises that are, you know, their truth value could be whatever. They could both be true. They could both be false. One could be true and the other could be false. And the conclusion could be true or false or whatever. Like you could make premises like... What do we want? False premises and a true conclusion? Um, Joey is a cat, sky's on fire, um, Joey and Isaac are talking right now, right? False premises, true conclusion. Do true premises, false conclusion. We could do one true premise, one false premise, and a true conclusion. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just, you can have any so combination. It doesn't really, there. it doesn't need anything to be valid then. So what, what, what does it need to be, what does it take for premises and a conclusion to be valid? Just... Well, it's it has to actually be that the structure is correct. So it would be impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. So you could have yeah. So it has to it has to actually lead to a con the conclusion. Yeah. yeah, but it's not, validity has nothing to do with whether the premises and conclusion are true and false. It just means that if the premises are true, the conclusion will also have to be true. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, I, I mean, you could theoretically have true premises, true conclusion, and a completely invalid argument, right? It wouldn't, uh, it would just, it would just sound like, like bullshit, like, you know, um, a true premise, uh, I'm sitting in a chair right now, another true premise, it's day out, um, and a true conclusion, uh, Joey's wearing headphones, 
but you can tell those are just like detached statements. There's no like entailment between them, right? It's just okay. like how the fuck are you? It's not like the premises are leading to the conclusion via some kind of uh, inference. It's just they just happen to all be true. And uh -huh. if the premises were false, the conclusion could be true. There, it wouldn't be like if the premises were like, if Joey's at home, then he's in a chair. Joey's at home, therefore he's in a chair. In that case, if the premises were false, I mean, yeah, you uh, can't you can't have it. Sorry, where the premises are true and the conclusion comes out false, right? It's going to actually be like, how could it be that if you're at home, you're in a chair, and you're in a chair, but the or sorry, and you're at home. But you're not in a chair, right? It's like, and we'll we'll spell that out mathematically. It'll become way more clear when we get into it mathematically. But just the idea is validity is it's impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. It's not had doesn't have anything to do with whether the premises actually are true. It's just about the form of the argument. So maybe giving okay. a like a um, a valid argument that's not sound would be the easiest way to explain that. So like. Um, I guess I kind of already did that, but we could just be like, you know, um, if uh, if Zeus can throw thunderbolts, then he'll throw a thunderbolt at my house. Zeus can throw thunderbolts, therefore he'll throw a thunderbolt at, or, th or therefore, yeah, he'll throw a thunderbolt at my house. It's like, you can tell there is not Zeus throwing a thunderbolt at my house. We're not reaching a true conclusion there. But you can tell the form is correct. Obviously, if Zeus can throw thunderbolts, then he'll throw one at my house and Zeus can throw thunderbolts. It's possible for those to be true, and he'll throw a thunderbolt at my house to not be true. Mm. I get it. Okay. Um, yeah, it'll become more clear as we get into the kind of math behind it, though. Yeah, it's just like when you say true, like Zeus is just a fabricated mythical being. Is that what you mean? Like this guy doesn't exist in reality. Is that what you mean by true? Well, yeah, it, weirdly, you might actually say the first premise is true. It's like a true statement about a fictional entity or something like that. But okay. the point is just that there's no way that he's throwing a thunderbolt at my house right now. That, that one's definitely false. So you yeah, don't yeah, have yeah, two yeah. true premises, right? But yet yeah. you still have an argument that's valid, right? If those premises are both true, that, you know, uh, I forget what they are, but like if Zeus can throw thunderbolts, he'll throw a thunderbolt at my house, and Zeus can throw thunderbolts. If those are both true, then he'll throw a thunderbolt at my house. You can't have, you can't say, like, you know, if Joey's skateboarding, then he'll fall. Joey is skateboarding, but somehow it's not the case that he'll fall. It's like, that that doesn't make any sense, right? Mm. But uh, the, the reason I'm saying that is because uh, people will use, like, a valid kind of argument, but one of their premises is completely factually inaccurate, and mm -hmm. that's when you would sort of attack that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, if it was sound, then the premises would be factually accurate, and um, yeah, that's yeah. They, they have to be factually accurate. I mean, I just take factually accurate to mean true. So like, true. Yeah. I mean, there's different like yeah. theories of truth and stuff. That's a whole like rabbit hole. Like, what is what is truth? But yeah, it's like whatever exactly we mean by truth. If the premises are true, conclusions got to be true. You can't have true premises and a false conclusion if the argument is sound. So it depends, yeah. like, what error someone is making. Like, if someone is giving you an inference that just is obviously invalid, which in, in natural language, when we just have conversations, they'll often give you inferences that are invalid, but sometimes they seem particularly sketchy, and if you ask them to spell it out, it'll be very obvious that there's, like, a logical leap happening, right? That's an instance where you'd probably just attack, like, the structure of the argument. You'd be like, this doesn't seem like a valid inference. Um, but on the other hand, if they're giving you an inference where the structure's right, but one of the premises is just false, or, like, at minimum, like, you don't believe that it's true, you don't have a reason to believe it's true, then, yeah, you wouldn't focus on the structure. You agree the structure's fine. You'd be like, well, why would I accept that premise? Yep. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was uh, just making, just getting all of that fresh in my mind, because I remember discussing that with you, and I just want it to be refreshed. Yeah, totally. I mean, you've spent, like, not much time with this, so if anything is forgotten, just, just ask, and we can go over it. Um, no worries. So the next thing is, I guess, the uh, the operators. Um, so do you remember when these different operators are true? I guess maybe what I should do is... 
In fact, yeah. Well, so let's just let's just go through them. So, do you know, um, for example, when the uh, implication operator is true? Um, when is it? When it's so when the implication operator is true? Yeah. Did we did we go through this kind of stuff? Like, if I say like, in fact, maybe we didn't go through this. Um, did we go through like the operators like implication conjunction? Yeah, like uh, P implies Q or yeah. something. And do yeah. you know like when that that implication statement P implies Q is true and when it's false? Well, P would have to imply Q <laughs> for it to be true. Yeah, like say no? P, if yeah. Well, I mean, there's a. I, I think we must not have gone over what's called the like semantics here, which is usually done with a table for propositional logic. So. That's fine. There's okay. just specific conditions where those are true, so we can we can go over that. Um, okay. And then finally, I guess let's do. Um, we have to do determining when arguments are valid or invalid from their truth table. So, do you remember how to check the truth table and tell if an argument is valid or invalid? Yeah, I think that was like a red block, and that meant that it was uh, dodgy. The red, <laughs> the red block's a cheat code. Do you remember yeah. which which row gets highlighted with the red block? Uh, uh, not off the top of my head, but I don't remember the rows right now. I mean, well, you can flick one up. Yeah, I mean, let's uh, let's do that. I'll just generate one in the Discord. Just take me a second to do this. And it's gonna so, have the red. It's gonna have the red block in, block in there anyway. So it's it's gonna be cheat coded for me anyway, isn't it? <laughs> um, yes, but the important thing is just gonna be to notice the uh, the feature that is making that block be there. So here I've generated one. I guess I'll um, I guess I'll send this over to you. So just a second here, um, and I'll bring it up on screen so everyone can uh, see it. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, oops. Now one second. Okay, I'm gonna Pretty switch good. us over so that people can see this. I'm still getting used to some of this streaming stuff. I got a guy to do a bunch of like stream art and visuals and stuff to make it all a lot like smoother and more sort of aesthetic looking. Nice. But I'm not. Yeah, I'm not fully used to it though. Yeah. So here we go. Um, so you can uh, kind of see what's going on here, right? Can you can you see what the problem is with the uh, with the row that's red? Yeah, the, the, the conclusion is uh, zero. Uh, for, that's, for some reason, that's bad, eh? Well, what's bad is, do you recall, we recall what validity is, right? I'm just spacing out our Discord DMs, so it doesn't show all the DMs when I switch to Discord. Um, yeah, do you remember, um, of course, what validity is, right? Which is, you can't have true premises and a false conclusion for an argument that's valid. So, if you, if one means true and zero means false, look at what's going on in that, in uh, that uh, row. Uh, uh. Oh, uh, okay. Now I remember that one means true and zero means false. Uh, right. I forgot about that. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, that So you got two true, prem <laughs> two true premises leading to a false conclusion. Right, exactly. So yeah. it's possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false, which just means the argument's invalid. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the basic idea. So what we kind of probably want to learn to do today is, I think, to fill out truth tables. And okay. probably also a little bit of translation. So, where where should we start? Do we want to start with translating sentences from maybe English into prop logic, or do we want to do do we want to start with doing some more stuff with tables? Do you have any preference? Um, which one's going to help the best? Well, I think the translation stuff is very straightforward. So let's like do a bit of translation stuff. So I'll switch it over to the Discord so people can see this. And we'll just type up some sentences. So we'll go like, if Joey is alive, then Joey is a fridge. These aren't all gonna make sense. We're just gonna like write random sentences here and translate them. Joey is alive, 
Therefore, Joey is a fridge. Um, and I guess just for for simplicity's sake, I should probably uh, just for like ease of navigation, I'll label the premises. So here's an argument. You see that one? Okay. Now, obviously, you know what arguments look like when we start representing them with variables. So this is sort of going to be about how to represent them with variables. Um, and then once you know how to represent them with variables, it's easy to see how to generate the truth table. So we'll kind of we'll do some of this, then we'll do some truth table filling. And then if we get through truth table filling, we'll go to truth table generating. I don't know if we'll get that far, but you know, it's all good. Um, so. You remember that, so here's here's the basic things, okay? Whenever you have a proposition, any occurrence of that proposition has to be represented with the same variable. Like if there's some proposition um, that says Isaac is talking, it can't be that at one place in the argument, Isaac is talking gets represented with a P and somewhere else it gets represented with a Q. So you always wanna use the same variable to represent the same proposition. And um, the convention is usually to start with P. So in the same way as like in math, the convention is, for variables is usually like to start at X. Um, in logic, the convention is to start at P. Um, not really important, but it's just standard. Um, so the idea here is to be able to look at sentences and then determine where the propositions are in the sentences and what the connections are between the propositions and then lay it out in a premise conclusion form. It'll be easiest to do when you have an argument like the one that I've given here where you can see uh, where it's, it's already pretty much formalized, it just needs variables put to it. It'll be a bit harder when someone is speaking in natural language, but once you get good at it, it's, uh, it's really not that bad. So if you had to isolate some propositions in here, like where, what do you, what do you think they would be? Would you be able to do that right now? Yeah, I, I think the propositions are uh, me being alive and, wait a second. If Joey is alive, then Joey is a fridge. Um, those two things maybe? Yeah, yeah, those, those are the propositions. They're two separate, so they're two separate propositions, yeah? Yeah. They're going to, they're yeah, they're they're going to be linked together into something that still technically qualifies as a proposition. But those are the smallest bits for sure. Um, now there are other logics that get um, more that like propositional logic. The smallest unit is a proposition, but there are more complicated logics that can go inside of propositions and then do do stuff in there. But that we won't worry about that right now. Um, so now. If we were going to like label these propositions, if we were going to do that, how, what what labels would you put to them? Well, I mean, you just said to start with P, so maybe just one can be P and one can be Q. Okay, and what do you think the connection is between, um, in that first premise, between the two propositions, Joey is alive and Joey is a fridge? I mean... Would it, it would be an imp implication? Yes, that's right. Yeah, so like because... that would be like the, the arrow, it, Joey is alive, implies Joey is a fridge. Yeah, so how would you write it? So you'd be P implies Q. Yep, um, that's right. So I can, I'll write it out for you. Um, so you have that right. So what would... Implies Q. Yeah. Um, anytime you see if then, it's an implication. Okay. Um, so, how about premise two? What would we write for premise two? Yeah, it would just be P. Yep. And then how about and, the conclusion? Yeah, and it'd be like those three dots, therefore Q. P, yeah, therefore now, Q. Not, not everyone's going to care about the dots. The dots are just useful because they, uh, they just show where the conclusion is. But you could, you could just write Q if you want. But yeah, that's good. So yeah, that's, that's the structure of that argument. I'll give one or two more you're fairly comfortable with it but it's kind of this is kind of like if you remember from last time when we were talking about what a proposition is and i just give examples of things that are and aren't propositions and then pretty quickly you're able to start teasing them apart 
this is kind of like that. You'll uh, you'll be able to kind of like do this with different types of sentences pretty uh, pretty quickly. So let's go. Uh, the sun is out, and the dog is barking. Um, let's do. Um, let's do. Um, yeah. And some of these aren't going to be valid. We're just going to we're just going to write them. Um, so here's another one. What do you think P one would be? So for, first of all, where what are the propositions in here? Um, the proposition is the sun being out and the dog barking. Yep. Uh, and if we did uh, P1, how would we try to write out P1? Yeah, so um, it'll be like a P and an inclusive, is it inclusive d disjunction? Not quite. That's that's uh, for... Uh, no, just, it's just a conjunction. Yes. So it can, okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, just an upward. I've got, I've got it here, it's a little upward um, triangle. Yep. So P and Q. Yep, that's the first one. Now, then, um, what about the next two? Well, they need they need their own letters too, don't they? These are different mm. propositions. Not quite. Um, wait, wait, oh, wait, it's a negation. Yes, right. Yeah, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> so no, that's it good. Would just, you, you got it, yeah. It would just be, would it be P at its negation or ne negative P? Or something. Yeah, it would it would be not p, not p. Okay, that's how you say it. Yeah, I've heard you say stuff like that before. Not p. Yeah, and not q. Yep. And I mean, we can put the therefore sign there, but yeah. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait a second. Ah, oh, because it's at the it's at the you put it in under c, so the, the, it just follows that it's therefore that that's the end. Therefore, yeah. q. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. So, 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 the sun is out and the dog is barking. The sun is not out, therefore the dog isn't barking. Okay, yeah, I get it. Which yeah. it's it's not actually it's not actually going to. Well, actually, it'll it'll be valid by explosion, but um, it's not it's not quite like it's not like a modus ponens where it's like you know or there's there's a form that's like modus tollens. It's like if the sun is out, then the dog is barking. The dog's not barking, so the sun's not out. It looks kind of like that, but it's actually not that. But yeah, um, that's right. So let's just do let's do a few more. We'll we'll make them a little a little more complicated. Um, so let's do um, if um, if the sun is out and the dog is barking, then cat is alive and Joey is happy. That Joey is happy. It's not the case that jo um, that cat is alive. Uh, conclusion. Therefore, it's not the case that the sun is out and the dog is barking. All right, this one's this one's a little bigger and has has a few more propositions in it. So, see if you can take a crack at that one. Okay, let's have a look. Um, so, if the sun is out, that'll be P, and the song so the dog is barking, that'll be Q, and then um, and then the cat is alive. That can be I don't know. Can we just make it, what letters do you go after Q, C, J? I mean, P. you just use the alphabet. Ah, oh, I can just use anything in the alphabet. I can, we can just <laughs> well, call well, that. normally you would just go in order, like just P Q R S T U V. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. We can just go. Okay, then the cat is alive, which is uh, R, and Joey is happy, which is S. Okay, now. Uh, so how would you write that? Well, you you've that isolated be, uh... the propositions and given them appropriate variables, so that's fine. But now, now it's about how you'd want to write it out. So there's going to be more than one connective here. Yeah, there is. I can see. Yeah, so I guess it's uh, 
The sun is out. Um, yeah, and conjunction. The sun is out, so that'll be P conjunction Q. Yep. Um, and then it's already, and it's uh, the P conjunction Q, therefore um, R conjunction S. <laughs> so, yeah, the, you can tell the P and Q and the R and S are both linked by conjunctions because they have the and there. But yeah. how how are the P and Q and the R and S connected to each other is the question. Yeah, because you've got then. Right. Um, so think, think about is it, it. Is it, it's, is it, oh, it's an implies. Is oh, it yeah. Implies. It yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I forgot about that. No, that's fine. So... You've got you've so got it's, this... uh, it's P conjunction Q implies um, R conjunction S. That's right. Now the only thing I'll add is that you want to put brackets there. Um, the, okay. It's a little easier to understand why that's necessary when you write out the math, but yeah, it's you can tell that the if the part that's uh, so when we have an if then statement. The if part is the antecedent, the then is the consequent. It's easy to remember because consequent, consequence, it's like the thing that happens if the other part's true. So you can tell here that the consequent is actually two propositions, right? It's like the sun is out and the dog is barking. So you know that the, the if then statement is going to link those two things together to another two things together. So that's why, without getting into the, the kind of like math behind it, it's like that's why you would put those two into brackets. What about... So um, if you if you were to say you just say P and Q implies R and S, mm -hmm. would that just be an instead of saying conjunction? Why do I say why am I saying conjunction? Um, <laughs> because it's the up I've got it written down here on my little list with an upwards arrow. Yeah, it, it, there are conjunctions in there. The sun is out and the dog is barking. Those are conjoined. Uh, those two things are together. Same with the cat Yeah, but you alive. don't call it that though. You wouldn't you wouldn't if you were going to explain this to someone like in your own language, you wouldn't say P and junction conjunction Q. You just say P and Q imply R and S, wouldn't you? And then you yeah, just write it out can... with an upwards R. Yeah, but it's fine to say conjunction. It means the same thing. Whatever uh whatever okay. you prefer. Yeah. Yeah, no, you got it. Um so yeah, I mean clearly you're getting the general idea here. Obviously you can like hone it in to the point that you can do this like more easily, but like as long as you get the general idea, that's kind of the important part. Um so yeah, what about what about like premise two? Let's just finish this one. Oh yeah, so we need like obviously uh it's uh what is that S negative S or something? What do you I oh, not S. Yep. It's not S, sorry, negative S. Yep, no, that's right. And what about So uh, not S <clears throat> what about P three then? Yeah, then it would have to be that that it's you know, it's not R as well mm -hmm. and then how uh, about the conclusion <laughs> yeah therefore it's uh not p <laughs> it's sure. not p it's not p conjunction q yep there you go yep not p and q yeah so this is like the basic idea of translations um you can we can also do it in the other direction where I give you variables and then you create random propositions and you know make something out of them. But you're tracking the important things, which are just that like every proposition needs its own variable. Anytime you see the same proposition, you don't give it a new variable, you use the same one you used before. And you're looking for the uh, the operators basically. You're looking for where there's a conjunction, where there's an implication. Now, obviously, I could I could make these more complex, and it would it would get a little weird, and you might have trouble if you did it on your own, knowing where to add brackets and stuff. But the uh, the general idea, it seems like you're fine with, so that's that's good. So yeah, it's kind I of think... funny, like you, you look, I just wanted to add something. It's kind of funny, like looking at like sentences and turning them into like equations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's quite simple when you explain it. But if I was to, if you were just to show me that like. P and Q implies like if you just show me that I'd just be like this is just way too hard like what, what are you showing me this for but once you explain yeah. it everything has its own formula everyone everything's got its own label mm -hmm. um it's 
you know, it's not that as hard as what it looks like when you just see it without any yeah. like <laughs> direction. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, eventually you'll be able to just see a sentence, understand what its form is logically, assuming it doesn't need to be represented in another logic. And then uh, you'll be able to also know how to create the truth table and how to tell if it's valid. And basically it's like once that's intuitive to you, once that's like like second nature kind of thing, it's not like you don't have to really sit there and think about it. That That's just super, super useful in conversations because then you can understand when someone's saying something that kind of follows or doesn't follow and it makes it really easy to know where to target your criticism towards the thing you're saying or to the thing they're saying like you know if if they're well actually we can we can get into that whatever so let's uh let's look at um let's look at filling out some truth tables now so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm going to open an excel sheet over here and, well, it's not really Excel, it's LibreOffice. Get the free software, people. Um, and I'll share my screen with you so you can see what's up. And I'm just gonna create some tables and we're gonna explore how to fill the table. And once you get this, it'll, this is one of those, like, it'll start really clicking once you, uh, once you get this part. So I guess I'll share my screen. I wanna share um, this. And you probably wanna mute me in Discord if I'm not already muted. Okay, yep, good idea, okay. Yep, and then I think what I should do here is probably take everyone over to this display scene. Right, okay, nice. Uh, so nice to have the stream stuff up and running. Um, okay, so uh, let's just generate some arguments. So we're gonna put like the variables over here. We'll just do mode exponents again because it's the simple one. And um, yeah, we'll write, uh, let's see here. So, first things first. We have to capture all the truth values for the variables. So just to be clear, in fact, I guess I could maybe, is there a way to just drag that down? No, okay, whatever. Um, this over here, these are gonna be the variables columns. This over here is gonna be the argument. So, Let's see. Uh, I, I can't actually see like what's up here. Are you sharing me your screen? Uh, yeah. You can't. You can't see this right now. Nah, I can see you. What? One second. That's not good. Um, it should be sharing. Change window. Um, one sec. Is it? Is it just not sharing properly? It, it should share this. You're not seeing. Um. What I'm doing there? No, I, I, I can see you on Discord, and uh, that's it. Wait, what? Okay, and how about if I if I click over here now? Do you see it? No, I see you. Oh, that's a technical problem. That really sucks. Are you serious? Fuck, that's lame. Um, uh, okay. maybe, maybe just uh, hang up and call back or something. Uh, yeah, try that. Um, I'm I'm echoing a bit too. Can you mute me over there on Discord? You're, um, you're, 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 you're muted on Discord. Oh, sorry. That's you. My bad. Okay, I got it. Um, yep. So, you right now, in Discord, you don't see this big chart? I, now I can only see me. You've, you've gone. You're gone. What? Are you serious? Oh, man. That's really shitty. Okay, the only thing I can think of is that Discord's glitching, so I'm just going to try closing and reopening Discord, okay? Okay. Um... If that glitches out, that's actually going to be a problem for sure. So I'll see if I can get it working again. So share my screen. Yeah, I mean, it should be working. So do you see that screen share, Joey? Uh, okay, there's... Uh, so join the video call, yeah? You want me to join the video call? Yeah. Join call. Okay, now when I open it up, I can't even see you. I can only see me. It's just Wait, big, it's big... yeah, d click, double click on yourself. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, and, here we go. And tell me one of the things you see as a graph. Okay, uh, okay, there's two things here. There's you and then there's watch stream. Yeah, ah. watch stream. That's what you want. There you go. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, I can see that now. Okay, Whew. fucking A. Nice. 
Okay, and you can still see it now? It's all good? You can see me yeah, clicking yeah, we're around good. here? I can see you clicking around, yep. yep. Okay, cool. perfect. So, alright, nice. I was worried there. I was like, that's gonna fuck us up. <laughs> so, these over here are the variables, okay? P and Q that are being used okay. in the argument. But this stuff yep. over here is the actual argument, and I left a blank space in between, so you can tell. So, what we need to do is capture all the truth values for the variables. Now, there's actually an equation to do this that I'll show you in a bit, but for now, I'm just going to write them out. So, we're gonna go P, F, T, F. We're gonna go T, T, F, F. And I think that we talked about this a bit last time, but you can probably see here that we've captured all of the possible options. So, it could either be that P and Q are both true, it could be that P is false and Q is true. It could be that P is true and Q is false. Or it could be that both are false. Yeah. So there, surely you understand that there can't be another option here, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like an easy way to... Mathematically, yeah. Yeah, there's other logics that introduce more truth values and weird shit like that, but this is the kind of the basics. It's, it's called a bivalent logic because there are two valences for truth, true and false. Um, and the, uh, there's something else I was going to say about this. Oh yeah, the, so an easy analogy for anyone watching, I guess you already get it, but if you just picture two light switches, right, think of how many positions there are, right? You could have both on, you could have both off, you could have one on and two off, or you could have two on and one off. And it's the same thing for each variable you add. So like, if you add another uh, variable. It's like having three light switches, right? They could be all three on, all three off, one on and two off. Um, you know, you could have, <laughs> you can picture all the combos. There's going to be eight combos, though. And it, it kind of keeps increasing like that. So it, it, it exponentiates. It's like if you have one variable, there's going to be two truth values, true and false. If you have two, there's going to be four, like what we have here. There's three, there's going to be eight. And there's a handy little equation you can use to just determine how many columns you're going to need, or sorry, how many rows you're going to need um, as, as a function of the amount of variables. But we don't have to worry about that right this second, but it's super fucking easy. So now what we want to do is we want to look at the argument and we want to be able to fill these things in, okay? We want to be able to tell, fill all this shit in, and then at the end, once we've filled it all in, we're going to be able to tell if it's valid or not. Uh, are you following me so far on all that? So you're going to find all the different variables of this one argument to find out if in, in every single case it's um, valid. Yep, that's that's the idea. We're going to fill out the whole table here. And if, if once we fill it out correctly, there is no row with true premises and a false conclusion, then we're going to have a valid argument. If there is a row that has true premises and a false conclusion, then we're going to have an invalid argument. So, um, yeah, are you tracking me so far? Are we all good? Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Okay, cool. So, let's fill out just the P and the Q before we worry about the premise that has uh, an operator in it. So, if we fill out the truth values for P, what do you think they're going to be? Uh, what do you mean? True. <laughs> okay. What about the next? Wait, wait, wait. What is the, what is P? He is just some proposition. Could be anything. <laughs> okay. it's, it's a variable, so it could stand for whatever proposition. In, in this case, right here, it's not important to know what the proposition is. Okay. So what about so when we look at the first row, you said true, but I, I don't know if you just said that randomly. Do you know why? I just said true? it randomly, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the question is, how how would we determine when P is yeah. true and when when Q is true? And let's not worry about this one right now. How would we know when P is Q and when true is when Q is true? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Okay. So we filled out the variables column, right? And we did this. Okay just by making sure to capture all the truth values. We didn't like look at the world and think about like, oh, like, is it true that P or something like this? We just filled out all the possibilities. So when we're filling out the argument, what we're gonna do is wanna look at the variables column and determine what the truth value is from the variables column. So uh -huh. 
Right, so like if you had a conjunction or something like P and Q, we'd look at this and we'd be like, okay, well it's true here because P and Q are both true. It's false here because they're not both true. It's false here because they're not both true. And it's false here because they're not both true. So that's like the kind of idea. We're, we'll, we'll go into it and as we do a few, it'll become easier and easier. But the idea is to fill out the argument, uh, the truth values for the argument, we're just gonna look at the truth values for the variables and we're gonna be able to determine the truth value for the argument from the truth value of the variables. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So what you're saying is we just copy and paste those over. <laughs> yes, for P and Q, it is that easy. Yep, you got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so we'll just select all and we'll just copy paste them all over. But so you're saying, so what you do is you look over, so when you're reading the table, you look over here and you move them over sort of thing. Now I can't see what you're pointing at, but I assume you're pointing at these. So yes, yeah. that's the idea. We, we always, like you can kind of tell because we filled out the truth values here. Obviously we're going to use this information that we've filled out to calculate the truth values over here. Now, okay. when, when a premise or a conclusion is just a propositional variable. It's just P or Q or something. It's just the easiest thing in the planet. It's just gonna be the exact same values, right? It's gonna be a bit more complicated when it's something like this, when it's a conjunction, because then we have to yeah. look at when a conjunction is true. But yeah, so for P, let's just go through. So first row is true. What's the second row? False. Next. Uh, T, true. Next. Yeah, and then, and then false. Okay. And then what about Q? Yeah, and you got true. Yep. True. Mm -hmm. False. Mm -hmm. False. Okay, so we've got the table actually mostly filled out now. Now, I don't know why it's, uh, I don't know why I'm getting sound from you. I wish that I could, uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, okay, I'm muted. Sorry for everyone who's been dealing with that. Um, okay, so now we want to look at this one. This one's a bit more complicated. So. The question is, did I send you little um, diagrams that show when the operators are uh, have different truth values? Or did we just talk in English about like, oh, it's true when they're kind of both true, or it's false if they're both false? Did I actually send you diagrams, or did we just talk about it? Uh, when, in the last session, or during this session? Uh, in the last session. I, I honestly cannot remember. Uh, you sent me a bunch of different um, things okay. last session. I'm sure you would have you would have um, you would have written that down. It would have stood out as something to write down. I'm sure. So um, I think that what I'll do right now is I'll do it on my phone. I'm just going to send you over some pictures. These are just from a basic proto logic text, and they're just going to show when the different um, operators are true and false so those are coming through on discord um i'll give that okay. like five seconds or something and we'll take a minute to look at these and then we're gonna go back to um this table stuff so i'm gonna bring everyone else over to the discord and let's just have a look at some of these so firstly Let's just look at negation, because negation is the easiest. It's the very first one there. So remember, 0 is the same as f, 1 is the same thing as true. So the, uh, the alpha symbol there, that just represents, well, technically what it represents is just like a well-formed formula, but just look at it like it represents a variable. That's fine. Just pretend the alpha just stands for p or something. So negation should be pretty easy to understand, right? If you look at alpha, which is the variable, right, you say that that represents p or something, you can see that there's two possible truth values for p, right? It could be true or it could be false. And you can see that the negation just has the opposite truth values, right? When p is true, the negation is false. When p is false, the negation is true. Um, does all that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty simple. Okay. Now let's look at the next one. So this is conjunction. This is your favorite, Joy. <laughs> um, so we have, uh, again, like alpha and beta there, just, uh, you know, just, you can just look at them as if they were P or Q. Technically they stand for well-formed formulas. So like the way that it's really showing it in this book is like that alpha could actually be some big conjunction. It could be like P and Q and R and Z. And it's just, it meets the standard for being a well-formed formula. It, it's a formula that makes sense in propositional logic. 
but you don't really have to worry about that. You can just uh, you can just look at it like it represents p and like beta represents q. And the little dot in the middle is just a different symbol for conjunction. Sometimes there's different symbols that are used, but it just means the same thing as the hat. So if you look at alpha and you look at beta, you can see the truth values, right? It's like you can have both true, you can have one true and the other false, you can have one false and the other true, or you can have both false. Following me so far? Mm -hmm. And yep. you can look at the conjunction, which is that middle uh, column, and you can see when the conjunction comes out true. <clears throat> so this should be intuitive. What, when is the statement A and B true? When it's... What, what do you mean? When is it true? When, yeah. when, when, when a is, is the true. statement A, <laughs> when a, a, a is true, B is a, true? Yeah, exactly. A, yeah, the so, state, it's like, when is the statement Joey is alive and Joey is human true? Well, when Joey's alive and Joey, when Joey alive is alive is true, and when Joey is human is true. So yeah, so they've got to be true, yeah. Yeah, and then it's false. You can see it's zero on, in that middle column, zero for all three of the yeah. others, right? Yeah, I see. So uh, now I see what you mean. Yeah, so up here in our little truth table over here, the top one is going to be um, true. The rest of them are going to be false because right. uh, P is false or e either or either or P or Q are false in uh, the below. The below um, yep, or both are false. So and and if yeah. as long as at least one of them is false, it's not true that both of them are true, right? So yeah, yeah, of course. Pretty pretty straightforward. Um, so disjunction, the next one. I mean, again, this is this is an inclusive disjunction. I know that we went a little further and also talked about exclusive disjunction, but inclusive disjunction is like and or. So if I say like Joey is alive and or Joey is human. You can kind of tell it's going to be true if either you're alive or you're human or you're alive and human. It's only going to be false if you're not alive and you're not human. So can you kind of see that looking at this table here? You can see when A is true, you can see when B is true, and you can see that the inclusive disjunction, you know, A and or B, it's true as long as at least one of them is true. It's only false when they're both false. Does that, uh, does uh -huh. that make sense? Yeah, and or. So... Yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Now, the next one is implication, okay? And implication, the truth table for implication is a little weird, okay? It's, it's a little strange because of the bottom rows. It trips out pretty much everyone when they first see it. Um... And there's a whole kind of ongoing discussion within logic, um, like the field of logic, about how, how best to understand the uh, like conditional statements in English. Does the material conditional actually capture them best? Um, are there issues with the material conditional? So this might seem a little strange, but you can look at when the material conditional is true. So material, it's just, or it's, yeah, material implication. It's just, it's the same thing as when we talk about if then. It's just using a different word here. Uh, implication, same thing. This is implication. So okay, you can see that if A and B are both true, the implication is true. In fact, you can see the implication is only false if A is true and B is false. So if you make a statement like, if Joey is alive, then Joey is human. We're only going to say that that's false if you're alive and you're not human. I'm a frog or something. Sure, yeah. Um, now the bottom two rows, you can see that we consider them true even though the antecedent is false. So that can seem a little weird, right? If you have a statement like, uh, if Joey is alive, then the sun is bright, right? And say that you're dead. So it's like, it's not true that Joey is alive, and it is true that the sun is bright. We still say it's true that if Joey is alive, then the sun is bright. Now, that's kind of weird, right? Because it seems like, you know, maybe Joey could be alive and the sun could be, like, out or something. Maybe you're kept alive in, like, a spaceship or something. It seems a little weird to say that it's true 
Uh, like, if you say, like, if Superman exists, then Jesus exists. It's like, if, if it's false that Superman exists, then we say that statement is true. But it seems like, wait, but if Superman exists, it doesn't have to be the case that Jesus exists. So that can trip people out. And honestly, what I would say is you just want to focus on the first two rows. Don't worry about the later two rows. Once you have a better sort of understanding of logic, um, then you'll be able to understand why the material conditional is done like that, or the material implication, and it'll, uh, it'll make a bit more sense. But for now, I would just kind of ask you to just go with the flow on that one. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, but we, either way, you can see what the table looks like. You can see when it's true. Yeah. Um, and then finally, biconditional. Um, the biconditional is very straightforward. Um, it's just true when both are true or when both are false. So, biconditional is only going to be false if, like, one half is true and the other is false. Is that also nice and uh, clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, now what we're going to do is go back over to... Um, you're going to go back over to these tables that we're doing. And... You know, it's a little unfortunate for people because I can't show it on screen. Um, I guess I could actually draw these in here. Um, I mean, I'll, I could put them a bit lower. I mean, why not? Yeah, fuck it. I'll, I'll just take a minute to write some of these up. Let's just... Maybe we'll just use a limited amount of um, symbols so we can fit it on screen. Let's do... Um, 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 and let's also, I guess we'll get conjunction on here. Um, okay, T, F, F, F. Okay, so I, I've written out a few little tables down there just so people who are watching can see, but you can obviously refer to the tables you have in, in DMs. Um, <clears throat> okay, so ignore everything lower down. This is all, all oops, what the fuck? All of this shit down here um, is just like, that's just for reference. It's not part of the argument. So yeah, let's try to fill this shit out, right? So we have to determine when this is true and when it's false. And we know the variables truth values over here. So you should be able to calculate this by looking at the truth table for an implication. Uh, following me on that? Uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. F first, uh, first row. P and Q are both yeah. true is the implication. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so that would be true. Okay, how about the second row? Yeah, well, the P is false, so it can't imply Q, which is true. Okay. Is that true? And yeah, no, yeah, no, it's, it's, false. It's, it's false. So this is what trips people up. The material conditional is a little weird. Just look to your, your table for the material uh, implication. Oh, oh wait, okay. Yeah. I, I, okay, so material can... Uh, so we're doing a different one now. This is different. Well, you, You're you using the same... You've yeah. changed the uh, doobie on the top. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to... See, this is the thing. I think that the ones that I showed you might have the T's and F for the, for the variables written out in different places. So you have, to, you have to actually look at which truth values it corresponds to to make sure you get the, get the right value. So we, ha we have these first two, right? How about the third one? If P is true and Q is false, is the implication P implies Q true or false? Uh, false? Correct. And then how about when both are false? <laughs> that has to be false too, eh? No, you gotta look to the table. Ah, oh, where's the table? Uh, the Discord DMs. Ah, oh, true, sorry. Right. It'll be out a bit okay, easier so... as we go through a few more, but yeah, we've got it. So, now we have the table filled out here, eh? We have the argument table filled out. So now we should be able to assess validity. Now, 
there's no more red bar, Joey. So this time it's just on you. Is there any row where the premises are true and the conclusion is false? No. Right, so is the argument valid or invalid? It's invalid. <laughs> it's invalid? Wait, it's, wait. It's valid. Of course, because there's no case where the premises can be true and the conclusion false. It's invalid uh, okay, if you yeah, have yeah, one yeah. of those cases. So let's yeah, yeah, yeah. let's make it a little a little more. Um... This is tripping me out a lot. Now I've looked at the table properly, and I can see um, I can see on the table you got zero one zero, and that would be T F T, and then you've got um, the top three T T T, and you got one one one. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I should have just looked at this to start with, but I kind of got a little bit tripped out a bit. That's okay. It's fine. Um, all right. So let's let's do a new argument then. Um, I'm trying to delete cells. How do I fix that? Um, tab. Mm, I guess I just got to click every time. Okay. All right, so let's see what what will we do for a new argument? Let's do let's do p or q, and let's do let's do not q, and let's go therefore p. So this is actually a really common argument form. This is called disjunctive syllogism. It's where you, and you I've seen you use this before. You know. Either you're vegan or you're an animal abuser. You're not vegan, therefore you're an animal abuser, right? That's a disjunctive syllogism. Um, so let's try to fill this one out. So when you look at this, where where do you think is the easiest place to start? With P or Q, with not Q, or with P? Uh, I don't know, probably not Q. P is probably easier because P doesn't P. even have a negation. It has it literally okay. has nothing else, just a P. So what do you think the truth values are for P? Uh T. Mm-hmm. I'm just copying it from the other side. Eh? That, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I'm just making sure that you know where to look. That's totally fine. Yeah, T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, F. Okay. How about not Q? Because obviously this is this is going to be a little easier than this one here. Um, so, how about not Q? What are the what are the truth values for this? Yeah, I mean, not Q. Is it? It's going to be the opposite to Q. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Like if you look down here at the negation table for it's it uses P as an example down here, but it would be the same with yeah. Q. The negation you can tell it's always just the opposite. If P is true then not p is false. If p is false, then not p is true. So negation is always just going to be the opposite. Okay, so it's the opposite of the q in our little variables table on the left. Correct. Yep. That'll be, yeah, f, f, t, t. Yep. You're going too fast for me. Okay, well, it's, uh, so, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's all good. Okay, two down. And now we're doing a inclusive disjunction. So for this one, you're gonna want to look at your table to see when it's true, but it won't—it won't always be in the same order as the table or something. You have to look at the table to see when it's true, and then you have to look at the variables column to calculate when it has which truth value. So in the first row, where p is true and q is true, is the inclusive disjunction true or false? Yeah, yeah, that'll be true. Correct. Yeah. What about the second one, where p is false and q is true? Okay, P is false, Q is true. Yeah, yeah, that'll be cool too. Yep, true. Cool is, a, is an interesting truth value. Um, and then <laughs> what about where uh, P is true and Q is false? Uh, you mean, uh, wait a second. It says not, not Q is true and... Don't have to worry about negation right now. Don't think about negation. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. Ah, yeah. oh, so, so P is... So, so sorry, say that again. Well, if we look at the variables oh, yeah, okay. column, right here. Oh, here. Okay, here. Okay. Yeah, then yeah, then that's true as well. Okay, and what about for these values right here, when both are false? No. 
no is in false. Ah, oh, false. Sorry, yeah, that's false. Yeah, <laughs> I like your truth values. We have cool. We have no. Um, yeah. All right. So this is this is correct. Yep. You, we filled that out perfectly. So now again, is the argument valid or invalid? <laughs> okay. So um, wait. Tell me again what the uh, criteria is. Two true okay. premises and a false conclusion. Yeah, I mean, sometimes there's more than true premises, but always when you're trying to think, is it valid, just think back to the definition of validity, right? It's impossible for it to have true premises and a false conclusion. So it's going to be invalid if that's the case. If there's, if there's any argument where all of the premises are true, if any fucking row in here, if a single row has all premises true and the conclusion false, it's invalid. Yeah, well, this is valid then. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's the only so the only time it will be invalid is if you see uh that it there's two T's and therefore the conclusion is also false. That's the only yeah, time. You you have the right idea, but technically not all arguments have just two premises. Like if you had three premises, you'd need three T's and a false conclusion. The point is just all of the premises true and the conclusion false. If you had eight premises, it would be eight T's and a false conclusion. And that's the only time it would be invalid. Yep, that's right. Because remember, okay. uh, validity is... And now, now, remember our definition of validity, how we talked about it being impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false? And I said, you're just going to have to go with me on the word impossible, but once we get into the math, you'll be able to understand impossibility in more detail. So now you can do that, actually. Now that we have started doing the actual tables and filling them out, we can understand logical impossibility to some degree here. So we would actually say, and there's different types of impossibility, right? We can talk about physical impossibility, logical impossibility, but obviously when we're talking about logic, it's logical impossibility we're concerned with. Um, we can see what it would mean to say that it's logically impossible for the premises of this argument to be true and the conclusion to be false, right? It just means that there is no, there's no row where that can actually be the case based on how we've defined the variables here, or sorry, the, the operators here. It's like we've given specific definitions to these things, right? Like for this right here, P or Q, we've given a semantic for it, right? The semantic is a, represented in the truth table for P or Q, which I don't have here for some reason, but you have it in Discord. Um, we know when this is true, right? So when we get a table like this, where once you fill out the values for the premises and conclusion, there is just no row where you have true premises and a false conclusion. And if you were to have that, you would have broken one of, you would have broken the logic, right? You would have used some, you would have filled something in incorrectly. You would have like, like say that we make, let's say that we make this invalid, okay? Let's say, um, say we do this, okay? This truth value right here, this is wrong. This, this, uh, this T here, that's, that's a wrong truth value, okay? Right now, the disjunctive syllogism, it's invalid, but it's actually because we violated one of the rules of logic, which was our um, definition via truth table, our truth table definition, our semantic for negation, right? We've actually filled the table out incorrectly. We had to actually violate logic for the premises to come out true and the conclusion false. So. You should be able to understand with a bit more clarity now what it means to say that it's logically impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false in a valid argument. It means that in order to get that um, result, you'd actually have to break one of the rules that's specified for your logic. Yeah, yeah that's I'm just, starting that's, to understand it. Yeah, that's an additional point. That That's kind of almost... a. It's more of a like meta point about about logic and about logical impossibility. That's almost talking in a more broad philosophical sense about it. Like, but but you know, it's still useful to know, right? Because people throw words like impossible or whatever around, but they actually have a strict meaning in logic, at least. Um, and this is a way to understand it, right? It would actually be when you say it would be impossible for the premises of this argument to be true and the conclusion false. We mean logically impossible, as in we'd actually have to break a rule of logic 
in this the example I gave was was breaking the rule for filling out uh, negation in order to get that result where the conclusion is uh, false and the premises are true. Yeah, that's that's a side point, but I just thought you might you might appreciate that. Uh, you want to do one or two more? Yeah. Um... Yeah, definitely. I mean, those tables helped a lot. It's kind of like, like it's you gotta you gotta stay sharp on it because it's you can just looking at all that you can get confused quite easy if you're not paying like don't pay attention as a, like before I wasn't paying as much attention as I should have, and it got yeah. a bit confusing. But um, yeah. I mean, just I think uh, this obviously this is like my first someone second time doing this type of thing. Mm-hmm. I understand it's all formulas and it all it all should work out um, if you follow these principles here, these little tables here, which is yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's one of those things where like some people just love logic and just find it interesting, right? Like I just I just happen to love it and find it interesting. It's not going to be the case for everyone, right? You might, I don't know how you feel about logic. You might like kind of enjoy it, kind of not enjoy it, but the utility of just learning the basics is kind of like, even if you don't enjoy it that much, it's just worth knowing because then you can just, you can just make a lot more sense, just set up your arguments better and um, yeah, just process other people's arguments better. So I think uh, you want to do one or two more arguments and then uh, I don't know what your timeline's like. We could do truth table generation after that, but uh, I've got a, I've got a, a I don't have much more time. So we'll do a couple more of these or unless you want to move on to something else to squeeze. No, in. I think, I think that this is good because I'll give you a, the, the big picture of where we are. Okay. So like the big picture is right now you have an understanding of what propositions are. You have an understanding of what arguments are. You have an understanding of what validity and soundness are. You have an understanding of when uh, statements expressed in propositional logic are true or false according to the truth tables for the operators. And you now have a sense of how to fill out a truth table. Now, ingraining some of those things will take a little bit of time. Oh, and you and you know how to read the table and tell if the argument's valid. Ingraining those things to a point that they're second nature will take a little bit of time. But the the main step that's left here for you to just have like a functional understanding of propositional logic that's like good enough for you to work with for most of your purposes is just to actually be able to generate the table on your own. So like right now, if I generate the table and I fill out the variables, you're able to fill it out like relatively competently. Like I can tell you still make a few errors, so you need a little practice with it, but you get the general idea, obviously. But what we'd, what we'd want ultimately is for you to be able to look at an argument, translate it into um, logic, into a formal language, generate the truth table. So you'd have to like be able to tell like how many rows and columns you need. That's kind of the last step about generating it then fill it out, which you know, and then tell if it's valid. So when we do round three, um, we'll, we'll just do like generating the truth tables. And then you'll have like kind of like the full basic skill set of like, look at an argument, translate it, generate the truth table, tell if it's valid. And uh, then once you have that, then we can do cool shit. Like we can look at like formal name the trait and get into shit like that. and. You know, if you, if you want to just spend more time doing nerdy logic shit, we can do that. But just having that basic understanding of PL is just, like, so vital and so good. So we're, like, most of the way there, basically. So, yeah, what I think is um, let's uh, let's do one or two more um, tables here. Just get, get you to fill them out just so it kind of sticks in your head. And then when we do round three, we'll just do the generating the table part. And... Um, then if we do a round four sometime, maybe we'll do like going through the whole process, like from an English statement to a truth table that you tell if it's valid or not. Uh, does that okay. sound relatively good? Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah, yeah and, and sure. honestly, like very good, uh, good work, dude. Like I'm under the impression, like did you, didn't you like not complete like high school, or am I uh, am I wrong about that? Uh, yeah, like I left high school when I was fourteen. I actually got kicked out of my maths class, um, so I. <laughs> For like just being at, I was run amok at school, but yeah, yeah, like so all of this um, mathematics yeah. and tables and things like that, I'm not very used to at all. Yeah, because you you're quick with it, and it's just it's uh 
it's kind of interesting because you didn't you didn't get like you don't have the foundation that a lot of people would have to work with it but you still nonetheless have like you know put in time to like troop through it and get some understanding so yeah like credit where it's due all right i'm gonna generate one or two more here and um then we'll just do that and then we'll call it for the day sound good okay okay um let's make something a little more confusing, okay? I'm gonna. Fuck <laughs> We're gonna add another variable. All right, you ready for this? So. Was this Yeah. Well, while I'm filling out the rest, you can you can look at that, but just. Notice how we've had to double the amount of rows with the addition of this third variable, right? And you mm -hmm. can also see the pattern. There's an easy pattern for filling these out. Um, I'll show you this when we generate them, but for the first variable, T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F. Mm -hmm. For the next one, T, T, F, F. For the next one, T, 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 F, 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 F. If we add a fourth one, then you go eight Ts, then eight Fs. If you add a fifth one, then you go 16 Ts, then 16 Whoa. Fs. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so te technically the order doesn't matter like you could sit there if you want and just plug them in and just make sure you get all the right ones but in the same way as if you're trying to write down all the positions for the light switches it would be easiest to do it with some kind of pattern so that it's just like mm -hmm. straightforward and simple um okay so let's do we're gonna do hypothetical syllogism have you ever heard someone say something like this um Oh, if I go outside, I'm going to be hot. If I get hot, I'm going to get sweaty. So if I go outside, I'm going to be all sweaty, right? It's like, that's <laughs> that's a hypothetical syllogism. It's kind of like, it's got, it's going to have two premises and a conclusion, but here, I'll just show you. Okay, so um, let's go P implies Q. Let's go Q implies R. Then let's go therefore P. Um, therefore P implies R. So we'll do this, and then we'll do one more, and then we're done. So, so P's like if I go outside, I'm gonna be sweaty. I'll be sweaty. <laughs> no. Is did you just make that what you just said then into a little yeah, argument? I, I just I just filled it in with with random propositions. But yeah, I could also do like if I do homework, I'm gonna get bored. If I get bored, I'll probably want to smoke weed. So if I do homework, I'm just gonna want to smoke weed. Like you can, okay. can kind of you know, like smoking you, weed is the R, and okay, yeah, okay, <laughs> yes, yeah. correct, yeah. Um, yeah, and the idea is, like, you can kind of see, the first is P implies Q, the second is P implies R, and this is kind of a way to, to eliminate that middle step and just go right from P to R. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's fill out some shit here. So, again, you're gonna need to make reference to your truth tables, but don't get confused now by the presence of this third column here, right? When you're looking at the variables, if it's P and Q, and it's an implication between P and Q, you should only be looking at these columns. Mm -hmm. If it's Q and R, you should only be looking at these columns. If it's P and R, mm -hmm. you should only be looking at this column and that column. So you just got to make sure you're looking in the right place when you calculate okay. the truth value. It's a little yep. tricky, right. but yeah. So yeah. whenever you're ready, dude, P implies Q. What, what do you think in the first, in the <clears> first row here? Uh, so P implies Q, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, of course, yes, true, we'll say okay. true. How about the second row? Um, true. Yep, how about the third row? Okay. Wait a second, okay, I've tripped myself out, haven't I? Wait a sec, yeah, I have, okay. No. False. You're right about the first two. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. What about this one? Yeah, true. Hmm. What about the true. next one? Sorry. There's another one? Yeah, we about? have because think about it. We have four variables, so we need uh, all, we need way more to capture uh, all the two uh, Yeah, I get yeah. I was trying to weasel my way out of that then, wasn't I? <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no escape. Okay, yeah, this would be true as well. Next. Um, yeah, this would be true too. Yep, next. Uh, this would be false. And finally. Uh, 
So this one will, will be true. Right. So it just it just actually repeated. Did that just repeat itself? It just repeated. Yeah, it itself. did, and it's it's because we filled it out in a in a pattern kind of way, where it went TF TF okay. and then it went TTFF. So they actually they have the same pattern, right? T this like you can see that is actually the same as that. Um, but but keep in mind, some sometimes people might fill it out in a fucked up way. So you always have to look at what the actual truth values of the variables are. You never want to just, just get yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious. Do you, would you do you have to look at this this little helpy thing that you get graph you got me, or would you just naturally be able to look at that and go no t t f f t t? Are you asking if I personally would have to look at it? Yeah. No, I I mean the it's it gets in your head very quickly. Like think about conjunction, right? It's like p and q. It's fucking obvious that's only true when p and q are both true, right? So like after you fill a certain amount out, you don't have to check the conjunction table and be like. If P is false and Q is false, is P and Q true? It's just in your head after a while. So but why should should I really be looking at the table then? That that should up, I just be? That's that's up to you. If you feel competent to do it without the table, go crazy. Well, if, I don't. Um, I don't feel confident. But I mean, I don't feel competent to. But I think wouldn't I learn better if I didn't look at the table? Because <laughs> I'm just like going, yeah, I yeah, okay, I yeah. Don't, I don't know that you would learn better, um, but the the point is actually to like it's fine that you're looking at the table to get the value because that's kind of like that's ingraining into your head what you need to do, right? It's like um, if if you think if you think you're ready to abandon the table and try to get it in your head without that, then you know go for it. If you start fucking up too much, then look at the table again. <laughs> you know, but th this is what I mean by like it's one thing to have a general understanding of like okay, we fill it out by looking at the the table for the operator in question, and you know, so on and so forth, versus actually having it ingrained in your head to a point that you can just like go through a table and easily do it. So that's what I mean when I say getting to like a good level of competence with it will actually require a bit of practice. But you seem to yeah. understand the like. How, how can ideas, I? Okay, though. well, yeah. I'll, let me ask you a little question. Um, how yeah. can a false P still in qu imply Q? That's okay. So there's reasons why the material implication is used in that way, but it's um, it's kind of like. In all honesty, I would just ask you to go with it for now and not um, <laughs> not get fixated on it because it, it opens up like a philosophical kind of thing. Like there's a whole debate about that within logic. It's one of those things like, you know how it's sometimes like you in like chemistry or something like this in high school, it's like they'll, well, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if you did chemistry in high school. For the record, I also just completed high school. I had to go back and do courses to get into a fucking uni. So I had to sit there at 27 finishing up fucking like biology. Um, but sometimes in like chem or bio or something, they'll, you know, they'll teach you a certain way things are, and then later on they'll be like, okay, so that was actually like false, like we just kind of teach it like that for simplicity's sake, here's what's actually going on. It's kind of like that, where like, we, we can, we could have a conversation about why the material conditional is the way it is, but it's just going to be kind of confusing. Like, you so can get... I, so basically, I, I couldn't just sit here and logically go, oh, so yeah, P's piece false uh, it still implies q which is true so therefore um you know this is true you know like uh, like it's probably best that i do have this little table here because i couldn't you couldn't just tell me a few things as to why that is well, see, it's you know easy I mean? to remember actually that a conditional or an implication however you want to call it you can call it different things mm -hmm. it's always true if the antecedent which is the first variable is true or false <laughs> sorry if the antecedent false. is false the conditional is always true right so it's like, uh, like, I, I mean, I can give you a little example. I just think that this is the kind of thing where it's easier to get a foundation with logic and then go back to exploring why this is the case. So if, if we say, like, if you cut my lawn, I'll give you $20, okay? Now, say that you don't cut my lawn, right? It's false that you cut my lawn. Um, do we really want to say that now it's false that if you cut my lawn, I'll give you 20 bucks. It seems like it's still true that if you cut my lawn, I'll give you 20 bucks. Um, so, but, so that, that's why we evaluate it. That's like the kind of reason why we'll evaluate it to true anyway. Now there, there yeah. are cases that seem kind of like the opposite, like the Superman Jesus case that I gave you, right? Like if Superman exists, then Jesus exists. It's not, then you say it's false that Superman exists. 
So then the implication is true. It's true that if Superman exists, Jesus exists just because Superman doesn't exist. That seems kind of fucked up. Um, but the other cases, like, you know, if you cut my lawn, I'll give you $20. And it's false that you've cut my lawn. We don't want to say now it's false that if you cut my lawn, I'll give you $20. Like, clearly, I'll still give you the 20 bucks if you cut the lawn, right? Um, so it seems like the real thing that's happening there, Joey, I guess we are just getting into it, but the real thing that's happening there is, like, the, the logical language has trouble capturing exactly what we're saying in spoken English. So what's required is a more nuanced approach to logic to actually really deal with statements like that. Now, luckily, everyone understands the case where that a conditional is false if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, right? If I say, if you cut my lawn, I'll give you 20 bucks, cut my lawn and I don't give you 20 bucks. Clearly in that case, it's false that if I get, if you cut my lawn, I'll give you 20 bucks. So understanding those first two rows is kind of enough to like do what you need to do most of the time. But what really is going on is the logical language isn't perfectly capturing what we're trying to say in natural language. So we have to opt for, you know, which, which is doing the better job of capturing it, to call the conditional false or to call it true. And it seems like saying that it's true in the case where the antecedent is false is doing a better job of capturing what we're talking about, even though it's still kind of like glitchy and weird. But really, the solution there is to get more complicated with your logic. So people might do things like adding in another uh, truth value or saying certain statements don't have truth values. There's, there's different approaches to deal with something like that. But that's what's happening. The logical language isn't perfectly capturing the natural language, so we need something that just roughly does the job, like, you know, captures enough of the cases that it seems to work. So that's, that's why, that's, I mean, I don't know if a logician would have more to say about that or might make some little corrections, but, like, that's, like, the kind of uh, reason why we call it, uh, we, we call an implication, why we say it's true, anytime the antecedent is false. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Or I okay. could just look at the table. <laughs> yeah, or you can just look at the table. But the, the point, the point I, I also want to convey is that not really understanding the details of what happens with a false antecedent in a conditional statement won't stop you from generally making sense with uh, propositional logic and like generally getting shit across. Like it'll still uh, it'll yeah. still do a ton of work for you even if there's like like there's always going to be kind of blind spots or, or questions that you like don't have the answer yet to right. Like that's the case for me. They're they're a little more like advanced than these kind of blind spots, but there's. Things that uh, once we get to them, I get like it just hits the limit of my knowledge of logic, and then it's like okay, well, I just questions of that sort I can't answer right now. But what I do have is like sufficient to handle like this kind of range of situations. So it's like the same kind of thing for you, right? There will be borders on your knowledge of logic, but as long as you carve out a nice little area of understanding, you can use that for like a lot of your purposes, and it'll function well. Mm. No, excellent. Okay. So, should we move on to the um, Q implies R? Yes, sir. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so we're going with true for the first one. Mm-hmm. And we'll go, uh, we'll go another true for the second one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we'll go another true. Mm-hmm. Okay, what am I looking? Okay, there, over there. Uh, oh wait whoa what yeah. the fuck sorry wait no no, no. i'm an, i'm an idiot my bad <laughs> space cadet look at number three. Oh no no i'm not a space cadet i looked at the wrong thing no sorry. no no it looks right it looks okay wait, and then the second. second yeah sorry i'm a fucking idiot i look see i just i just did the wrong thing i just looked at the wrong areas there for a second i thought we fucked up no you're right i'm wrong sorry next okay one. and we'll go t with the next one yep yeah okay yeah so well basically what i'm <laughs> What I'm doing, I was just, I was just using the other ones that we done before, just having a quick glance at. I, I wasn't really looking at the table, so. Um, That's okay. Okay, so you know. Well, you're getting it right, so it's fine. Yeah, this is uh, false. Mhm. Mm yeah, again, false. Mhm. Mm this is true and true. Right, and now the final, final column. Okay, so it's. 
P implies R, or therefore P implies R. Yep. Uh, so it's basically these two columns here, yeah? Um, Which two columns? Are you talking about these two the columns? The P and R. No, yeah. P, okay, no, okay, no good. it's just yes, P and R. It's, yes, these two columns. Yeah, those yeah. two. I, I was worried so you were the, looking at those two, yeah. So yeah, the first one will be true. Uh, yep. Um, this, what is it? Yeah, the second one's true too. Mm hmm. True. Mm hmm. True. Mm hmm. Uh, false. Mm hmm. True. Mm hmm. False. Mm hmm. True. That's right. Oh yeah, it's starting. To, it's starting to ring true now because uh, if yep. there's an F at the front, it's always uh, if the, the F. Yep. Then the yeah, P yeah, is right. true. The T then the F is false. Yeah, no, no, it's sort of starting to. Yeah, and and here's when we say F at the front. Let me just give you some terminology. It's called the antecedent. So whenever you look at a statement <laughs> like this, the first one antecedent, the last one consequent. Consequent. So, yep. Consequent. Okay. Yep. Antecedent cool. and consequent. And so and any is F. Yep, so any conditional statement here, I'll highlight the parts when I talk about it. Any conditional statement with a false antecedent is true overall. Mm. Okay. Um, now the question is, is the argument valid or invalid? Ooh. Yeah, have okay. fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so okay, so no, it's valid. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're getting you're getting quicker with this too. Um, yeah. So that's that's good. <laughs> you you can tell though that just by doing a bunch of this, it would just become like second nature, basically. It would. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's uh, let's um. That's almost why like homework would be good or something. Maybe I should think about that. I'll <laughs> I'll give you homework or something sometime. Uh, because then then you'll just have shit to work through and it'll make it easy. Okay, let's do one more. Um, and I'll I'll see if I can make it a little annoying but not too crazy um but yeah you you pretty much have the idea um we could get we could make the statements a little more complicated um but and there's some tools for dealing with that but like the basic idea seems to be coming across here which is good all right so let's do p um let's do p and um, actually, let me just think of what the best way to do this is. P e or Q. Q or R. Um, let's go therefore not P and Q. All right, let's try this one. All right, Joey, hit me up. Where do you want to start? Uh, uh, we can start at P or R, uh, P or Q, sorry. Sure. Is that the is that a bit, the best place to start? It's not the best place to start, but um, I it, think that the best is going to be either of these because these are these uh, are just a two propositional variable conjunction statement. This one is a two proposition or sorry, um, uh, disjunction statement. This is a two variable uh, conjunction statement, but it also has a negation. So. Oh, cool. Trying to trip uh, yeah. me out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah. So basically, uh, okay, we go. Uh, yeah. This is. Uh, wait a sec. This is true. Uh, yep. Um, this is true. Mm -hmm. This is false. No. Oh, sorry. Wait a second. This is. Oh. <laughs> I got stuck in the other one. It's different for these. Yeah. Eh? Okay. So, one. I will look at the table. Look at the old table. Just think, think uh, about the statement P and or Q. As long as at least one of them is true. It'll yeah, yeah, and or. True, yeah, no worries. Yep, true. Mm -hmm. False. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. True. Yep. True. Mm hmm. False. Nice. Yeah, that helped a lot. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all Q right. and or V. Okay, yeah, so, so uh, it's true. R. Yep. Uh, uh, yep, okay, true. True. Mm -hmm. True. 
Mm-hmm. True. Mm-hmm. True. Mm-hmm. True. Mm-hmm. Um, they're both false below that. Nice. Okay, now this one is going to be a little trippy, okay? Yeah, so what are we negating the P? Uh, but... Oh, so wait a second. Do we just negating the P? Yes, the negation applies just to whatever is in its scope. So this means you're just negating the P, but if we did this, um, then it would be negating the whole statement. I see, in fact, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think that with negation, what you really want to do is you want to look at P and Q, right? But for P, you have to pretend it's the negation of P. So you'd actually want to draw out another column there with, with not P. Um, mm -hmm. so, is there a way to just move these over? Fuck, I wish there was just... Can I insert column? Um, that can work? Yeah, sweet. Okay, here. We're gonna add... So, for a negation, we gotta add a bit more, okay? I, I want, actually, for you to tell me well, how to fill out the negation column. It would just be, uh, everything backwards. So, F, F T, F, T, F, T, F, T. Yeah. correct, yeah. Okay, um... Okay, so did I do that right? One second. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now I want you to. What? What? What is this upwards? Wait. wait isn't this a? This is an end. Yep. This is just an end. Yep. It's a conjunction. So oh. on on the little diagrams I gave you, they use a different symbol. Sometimes different people use different symbols. It's a dot. Yeah. This is like a I little. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dot. Okay. All right. <laughs> So where's the key? Ah, oh, there she is. All right, no worries. Okay, so... So not P. Mm -hmm. And Q. Yep. P and Q. Yeah, that's false. Correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait, wait, where are we? Okay, not P and Q. Hmm? Not P and Q. That's true. Yep. P and Q. That's false. Yep. Okay, where are we? Okay. Not P and Q. That's false. Yep. Where are we? That's false. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's false. Yep. Um. Ah, that one. Yeah, that's false too. Truth table master over here. Okay. <laughs> so. All right, I don't remember if this was the last or the second last one, but let's just say this is the last one. We'll, we'll finish on this. Is this valid or invalid, Joey? Yeah, this is this is actually invalid. Yeah, why is it We've invalid? In, because there's a, there's a line here where there's two true premises and a false conclusion. Yep, that's right. There's a counterexample here. Counter there's one there. Counterexample here. Counterexample here. A single oh, one heaps. means... Yeah, there's, there ah. happens to be three in this one, but a single oh, wow. one is enough that it's invalid. So yeah, I mean that's uh, that's fucking sweet, dude. So yeah, you uh, you understand propositions, uh, arguments, validity, soundness, basic translation stuff, uh, how to fill out truth tables, and how to check for validity. So really, yeah, we just need to do the how to generate a truth table, and then we can go from the whole process from like a natural language sentence to determining. If um if we've got a valid argument or not, and then it's just practice basically. So yeah, great yeah, was, uh, great work, dude. That was kind of fun. I didn't mind yeah. it. It's that kind of like <laughs> a little puzzle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any uh any last shit to say before we uh before we end it? Nah, man. Appreciate you uh, showing me that. Um, no, nah, it's man. cool. It's cool. It's like uh, once you sort of wrap your head around it, I guess you can just overwhelm yourself by seeing all the ones and zeros and numbers and p's and minuses and little signs. But I mean, you start to decipher it a little bit and start to see it a bit differently after after a moment. So 
Yeah, yeah. You just kind of got to get like not overwhelmed and just make sure you understand what you're looking at, and then it's kind of mm -hmm. straightforward. Once you once you knew what you're looking at, you're able to fill them like easily and with like pretty high consistency. Like there are pretty few errors. So yeah, mm. yeah, it's good. Oh, it's cool. All right, fucking a. Well, uh, yeah, good having you on. And you know, if you want to do another, we'll uh, do another sometime. <laughs> no worries, man. Thanks a lot, bro. All right.